Oh, how the turns have tabled. One minute I'm living at large in sunny Orlando, pretending to be a big shot and partying hard with my fellow purveyors of quality YouTube content. The next I'm back in a grey and depressing Scotland in February, facing another year of crap movies and waking up on my kitchen floor, covered in a mixture of kebab sauce and human bloods. Yeah! Speaking of crap movies though, Argyle is a film which released a few days ago, made by Kingsman mastermind Matthew Vaughn and boasting a pretty impressive cast that includes Henry Cavill, Sam Rockwell, Brian Cranston and Samuel L. Jackson, it actually had all the makings of a fun action comedy. The trailers even managed to get a jaded arsehole like me mildly excited, a bit like Tatiana when she's totally phoning it in during one of our special sessions. <laughs> but wow, was this film a let down. Instead of a fun, inventive and fast paced action adventure laced with witty dialogue and interesting characters, what we actually got was a slow, clunky, ridiculously convoluted and surprisingly unfunny mess of a movie, way too long for its own good, that feels like it was stitched together from the leftover ideas of other, far superior films. And it's all compounded by CGI that ranges from barely serviceable to absolute visual diarrhea that looks like it came from a Netflix original instead of a 200 million dollar movie. In short, it pretty much fucking sucks, and what's worse is that it represents a 2 hour and 20 minute black hole in my life that I'll never be able to fill up again. But hey, at least I can save other people from the same fate, so here we go. The film stars Bryce Dallas Howard as Ellie Conway, the author of a series of spy thrillers centred around Agent Argyle, a James Bond kind of character who's suave, dashing and irresistible to women. One sympathises. <laughs> <coughs> Anyway, she's just finishing her latest book in the series when she's suddenly attacked by real enemy agents who try to kidnap her. Luckily though, she's inexplicably rescued by a man named Aiden, who explains that everything she writes in her books has this weird habit of coming true, and so a group known as The Division want to get their hands on her. I say old boy, whatever could this mean? Their only hope of stopping them is to recover a magical bullshit MacGuffin known as the Master Key, which will expose The Division to the world. So they go to London, and then France and then the Middle East for various contrived reasons because they're glamorous and the kind of places where spy thrillers happen. But then, wouldn't you know it, it turns out that the real Argyle is actually Ellie herself. No way! See, Ellie was once a secret agent who got captured by the Division and brainwashed into forgetting her former identity. The Argyle books are actually her repressed memories of her former life coming to the surface, and because the Division were worried that she was about to reveal the master key in her latest novel, they decided it was time to take her out. What. The. Fuck. You're telling me that they're only acting on this now, like five years into her writing career? Why did nobody think to track her down the moment her first novel got published and it became pretty obvious that she was remembering her real identity? Famous authors are not all that difficult to find, you know. Ah, whatever, who cares. So she goes into full beast mode and rescues Aiden, and there's even more contrived bullshit about her actually being a division double agent all along with a secret inbuilt kill switch, but then she gets over it and saves the day and goes back to being an author again. And that's it. That's the plot of Argyle. Fuck. You know, doing a Kingsman style movie from a female perspective is a pretty good idea that probably would have worked better if they didn't try to cram all the meta fictional narrative on top of it. Because really, all this does is adds an extra layer of clutter to the already contrived plot that drags on way longer than it should and results in a script that feels like a patchwork quilt of different ideas awkwardly stitched together. Most of which were lifted from other, better movies like Romance in the Stone, The Born Identity, and even The Long Kiss Goodnight. Matthew Vaughn is clearly a talented filmmaker, but when you compare Argyle to the first Kingsman movie, you realise just how bloated, sluggish and meandering the film actually is. Kingsman gripped you right away with a unique, compelling protagonist that you instantly found yourself rooting for. The plot took its time bringing its central premise to fruition, letting you get to know the main players and what they stood for, before cranking things up into no fucks given territory. It worked because it knew it could only sustain that level of all out action and intrigue for so long before it burned the audience out, but Argyle doesn't seem to have the same carefully balanced pacing. Instead it pretty much launches into it straight away and never lets up, and the result is that by the end you really feel in that 2 hours and 20 minute runtime. Vaughn's always been a visually showy director and there's definitely plenty of that on display here, including a slow motion gunfight dancing scene complete with psychedelic smoke clouds. I've gotta be honest though, Suicide Squad did it better. Also, like I said earlier, the CGI can be absolute dog shit at times, which is pretty surprising considering the 
film cost $200 million. I mean, what the hell did you spend all that money on? It definitely wasn't a personal trainer for Bryce Dallas Howard, I can tell you that much. On that subject, the film boasts a hefty lineup of stars, some of which perform better than others. On the plus side, Sam Rockwell is always entertaining, he's got a great sense of comedy timing, and to be honest, most of the jokes that actually land come courtesy of him. Henry Cavill, on the other hand, is completely wasted in a script that barely uses him, which is a real pisser considering the trailers did everything they could to exploit him. In reality though, he's barely even in the movie. Seriously, that dude needs to fire his agent. He's wasting the best years of his career on pointless cameos and shit TV shows that don't deserve him. Samuel Jackson phones in the kind of performance he could practically do in his sleep at this point. It's funny, you know, but his mere presence in a movie used to be a sign that you were in for something pretty special, but his gradual humiliation in the MCU, coupled with his refusal to say no to any job, no matter how shit, actually seems to be tarnishing his reputation now. Now it almost makes me want to avoid films with him in it. Bryce Dallas Howard seems to be right at home playing the frumpy, out of shape Ellie, but the problems creep in when she has to switch into Rachel mode and she looks about as comfortable with the fight scenes as Echo trying to make different facial expressions. She's not particularly funny, endearing or interesting, and for the most part she's a pretty dull protagonist to be lumbered with. And Jesus Christ, fuck off with the cats already. Seriously, is this going to become one of those really heavy handed signifiers that a studio's desperately trying to make their movie appeal to women? Because what, lonely women in their mid 30s like nothing better than cats and boxes of wine, right? Fuck off, film. Ultimately, Argyle is a brilliant example of one thing wasted potential. A film that fails to make good on its interest in premise, fails to make use of its excellent cast, fails to deliver a female friendly take on the Kingsman franchise, and fails to be anything more than another forgettable flop, tossed into the January dumping ground and destined to be forgotten within a matter of weeks. Not a great start to 2024. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now!